Evening, May 4th. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. 1 Peter 1, verse 23. Peter most earnestly exhorted the scattered saints to love each other with a pure heart fervently, and he wisely fetched his argument, not from the law, from nature, or from philosophy, but from that high and divine nature which God hath implanted in his people. Just as some judicious tutor of princes might labor to beget and foster in them a kingly spirit and dignified behavior, finding arguments in their position and descent, so looking upon God's people as heirs of glory, princes of the blood royal, descendants of the king of kings, earth's truest and oldest aristocracy, Peter saith to them, See that ye love one another, because of your noble birth, being born of incorruptible seed, because of your pedigree, being descended from God, the creator of all things, and because of your immortal destiny. For you shall never pass away, though the glory of the flesh shall fade, and even its existence shall cease. It would be well if, in the spirit of humility, we recognized the true dignity of our regenerated nature, and lived up to it. What is a Christian? If you compare him with a king, he adds priestly sanction to royal dignity. The king's royalty often lieth only in his crown, but with a Christian it is infused into his inmost nature. He is as much above his fellows through his new birth as a man is above the beast that perisheth. Surely he ought to carry himself in all his dealings as one who is not of the multitude, but chosen out of the world, distinguished by sovereign grace, written among the peculiar people, and who therefore cannot grovel in the dust as others, nor live after the manner of the world's citizens, let the dignity of your nature and the brightness of your prospects, O believers in Christ, constrain you to cleave unto holiness and to avoid the very appearance of evil.